Hey guys, this is Abba with Coffee and Code. Today we'll be looking at while loops as a continuation from the for loops from the last video. Let's get started. Every single while loop can become a for loop. So let's start with our basic definition of our for loop. And we can just print a test. So now we were saying we want integer variable to go from zero to less than 10. And we want to increment it once every single time we go on the for loop and we just want to print test and after 10 times of printing this will print 10 times and finish the for loop okay so now we understand how a for loop works we can comment this out using the forward slash star notation and then finish it with a star forward slash as a block coming so the format for a while loop is the while word followed by a brackets and then the condition Followed by the brackets and then you open the curly brace inside and you have the contents inside. Just like the for loop, very similar except we just have one singular condition instead of three independent sections. So let's try and write one. So we can say while and we can just say while true. We can open the brackets and we can say console write line test. Now this is going to cause an infinite loop. So as you can see here, the console word is slightly grayed out and it says unreachable code detected. And that's because when we run it, you will see that they'll infinitely get lots of tests being printed to the console. So let's close this and start making this properly. So what we can do is we can refine a boolean value here. B stop goes true. And if we run that now, it still won't make a difference because we're not setting anything to the value. So what we can do, to one iteration, we can say bstop equals false. And if you can run it now, then you'll see it runs it once. It finishes the loop, hits that console read line, and now it's waiting for our input, and we can just press enter the console console. Perfect. What we can do now is we can take our for loop and start to implement this properly. So we know we have an int i equals zero. So let's define that at the start. So now we have initialized i to the value of zero. And we don't need our b stop anymore so we can say our condition will be exactly the same as the condition in here which is i is smaller than 10. now that seems fine but then we're not actually doing anything with the i variable so if you run this again then what you'll see is we'll have exactly the same problem with an infinite loop so what we need to do after every single iteration is we just say i plus plus and as it does in the for loop i plus plus just increments by one you can also write this like this, i plus equals 1. You can also say i equals i plus the 1. So you could say increment by 1, take the current value, add it to 1. I will say i is equal to i plus the 1. These two lines are exactly the same. This is the plus equals notation is just a shorthand. So you don't have to write the variable equals the variable plus the 1. The plus kind of revolves around this. And you can have i minus equals one, i divide equals one, and i times equals one. You can have all four of the operators like you used to, and it won't do any difference other than that operator turns into this one. So this line will be identical to this line, except that minus will be a minus here. So you can pick any one of these that you want. And the same goes for the for loop. You don't have to write i plus plus into here. You could write one of these three and it'd still work fine. Although I do suggest getting used to the notation plus plus. So if we leave this at plus plus, what's going to happen is we start the i variable at zero. Every time this while loop iterates, it'll hit this line increment i by one until it reaches 10, in which this statement will be false. And we can see that we have 10 console test prints. Perfect. I've copied the code in from the if statement video I did a couple of days ago. If you haven't seen that video, please click in the banner above to check it out. So what we're doing is we're setting up two integer variables, putting out to the console so the user can enter a number, enter a second number, convert them both into integers, and then multiply them together. And then we can ask the user, what is the value of the two number multiplied? Read the answer in, convert it to an integer, and then do an integer comparison to make sure if they got the answer right or wrong. Now the only problem with this code is the fact that you only get to answer one, and if you get it right, or if you get it wrong, you don't have another choice, the program will end. And if you get it wrong, you have to restart the program, type the two numbers in, and then guess your answer again, and keep doing that until you get it right. 
Now this is not ideal for the user because you don't want them to keep restarting the program just to answer the question. So we can take all of the static content, which will be from here upwards because we'll only read the number at once and the second number at once and do the multiplication once and then ask them what the value of the user is. So from here down, we only need this section of the code because this is where we read in the value that the user has typed in and convert it to the integer and actually do the comparison. So we need to tweak this slightly so we have a console.write. This means you could type at the end of the sentence. So what we'll do is we'll finish the sentence off and we can say write line and then the next line we can have a console write that just says what is your answer and we can put the answer in here and then we can read that in from the console here and it'll loop around OK. A boolean variable here called incorrect answer and we can call that true because at this point the incorrect answer is true because it's not it's not false because they haven't got the answer correct yet so we'll make the curly braces needed for the while loop and we can copy all our code inside the two curly braces so now this will partially work except we need to do something with the boolean variables so this will output what is the value of the number a and b multiplied set the value to true and then it will loop around the while loop indefinitely ask for the answer read the answer in, convert it, comparison, and print to the console. But what we don't have in here is setting this value to true or false. So if we set the value of incorrect answer to false, then the while loop stops, and we only want it to stop when the answer is indeed true. So we can say in here, incorrect answer equals false, because this is the only condition that we need to set the answer to being false, because that means they've got it correct. If it's set to false, then the while loop finishes, if it's set to true, it will continue. Now we don't need to explicitly write incorrect answer true in here because if we don't change the contents of it, then it'll always stay true. So now if we try to run the program and see what we've created. Enter the first number, 10. Enter the second number, 10. What is the value of 10, 10 multiplied? What is your answer? 60, 70, 10, 20. So as you can see, it's looping around and there's no amount of times it's looping like the for loop. It's looping indefinitely until we get the answer correct. So now if we type the answer correct as being 100, it says well done, you got it correct. And now it waits here because this wait is actually coming from the console read line. So now if we press enter, the console will finish. So just to recap, we took our first initial for loop that was defined as from 0 to 10, incrementing once, print out the test and we specified that the while loop is constructed by using a condition, just one singular condition, and then the contents. And then we rewrote this exact for loop in a while loop right here. We specified the integer as zero outside the while loop. We copied the condition down, i is smaller than 10, and we print the value test, increment i, so then the while loop finishes. If we didn't increment the i, then i will always be zero, and this while loop will go on indefinitely, and eventually we will run into issues and our program will crash. So what we did here is we copied the code from the if statement for a video I did, and we basically just modified the second half of it, so what the values of the two numbers multiplied. We set our while loop up, so then we could ask the user what the value is, and if they got it incorrect, it could keep looping and looping around. One thing to note to this is we also have a do while loop. The difference between the while loop and the do while loop is that the while loop will only enter the while loop if this condition is true first and then it will evaluate the next time it runs. The difference of the do while it will always do the first section and then it will evaluate the condition at the end. So this will always happen once and then it might happen more times after it evaluates the condition. The while loop will only ever happen if this condition is true first. So we could rewrite this while loop in a do while. So we could say while incorrect answer in here. And then we could just take all of our code and place it in between here. And if we run the program again, everything should work fine. 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 100. Well done, you got it correct, and it finishes. So you can use these in situations where you know you always need to do it once. For example, this is in fact the best situation because we always want to ask the user the first time if they have the answer and we only want to loop again if they don't have the answer correct. So this is a better application 
of do while than it is for a while because in this specific case so it makes more sense to use the do while in this case because we always want to ask the user first what their answer is and we only want to loop if the answer is incorrect hope that made sense leave any comments if you need to ask me any further questions and i'll see you in the next one